Let's imagine that it is the night before Paul's test. Paul pulls out his textbook and starts rereading his notes. He highlights all the important bits of information, hoping that he will be able to remember it for the test. He stays up most of the night trying to get in all the setting that he can. The next day, he writes his test. Unfortunately, he's unable to remember much of the information he studied and doesn't achieve the mark he had anticipated nor desired. The strategies that Paul used to prepare for his test are used by many students. However, these strategies are actually relatively ineffective. Although effective methods of studying are quite subjective, this video will provide some key tips that have been statistically proven to improve overall studying quality and efficacy. Using these strategies will help you remember more, which will lead to better test performance. Additionally, acquiring the right learning strategies is critical for students as it will support robust learning and promote lifelong learning. The first thing you need to decide is when you should study. Many students tend to cram their studying in one or two days before the test. But if you are running a marathon, would you start training for it the night before? You'd probably start training well in advance. A study from 2011 looked at whether people remember more when they cram learning or when they space out learning. Fifth grade students were split up into two groups and taught unfamiliar English words. One group spent 15 minutes studying the words, had a one minute break, and then spent another 15 minutes studying the same words. The other group also had two 15 minute studying sessions but had a one week break in between. Five weeks following the second learning session, the students were tested on the recall of the words. The group that spaced their learning with a one week break showed superior long-term retention on the test. This study demonstrates one effective strategy called the spacing effect. This is the memory advantage that occurs when learning is distributed across time instead of crammed. So if you have a test, don't spend two hours studying the night before, but rather spend one hour studying on two separate days. You study the same amount, but by distributing your studying, you will retain knowledge for a longer period of time and do better on the test. So now you have created your schedule, you sit down at your desk ready to study. There is actually one more thing that you can do before you get started. Our brains can only store approximately seven items in short-term memory at once. However, students often have many deadlines and reminders that they are constantly thinking about. Trying to hold all this information in your brain while studying may impair your ability to learn and retain information. A strategy that you can use to help you focus on an important task is cognitive offloading. Cognitive offloading involves physically transferring all your thoughts from your short-term memory onto a piece of paper. By clearing your mind, you now have extra mental space that you can use to process and remember the information that you are studying. So before you begin studying, write down all the things you need to do on a to-do list to get them off your mind. You can now purely focus on the content that you are studying. Now that you are mentally ready to learn, what specific strategies should you engage in? Many students report that they study by rereading and highlighting notes, but these techniques are not that effective. A more effective technique is practice testing. The testing effect refers to gains in learning and retention that occur when students take a practice test on studied material before taking a final test on the same material. It has been studied over many decades. The reason why practice testing is so effective is that it involves having to actively recall information, while rereading and highlighting are both passive processes. A meta-analysis from 2017 found that practice tests are significantly more beneficial for learning than just resetting the content. So when preparing for your test, try to do as many practice tests as you can. By spacing your studying, using cognitive offloading to clear your mind before learning, and engaging in practice tests, you'll be able to achieve the grades you desire while also retaining the information you learned in the long term. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the studies mentioned, check out the links below. If you liked this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine channel for more great videos.